This tutorial is looking specifically at how to rearrange mathematical equations in physics. Now there are two methods of doing this and on this particular video we're going to focus at the pure mathematical way of doing it. That will enable you to rearrange more complex equations and is the skill that you need to carry on if you are thinking of continuing through to A level. On a separate video we'll look at how to rearrange using triangles. So both methods are available for you to use and it is your choice as to which one you want to use in your exam. In your exam paper you get given the equations as words so you need to get familiar to converting those into symbols and then rearranging them. So this one is going to look specifically at rearranging straight from mathematics. So if we start with an equation from P3 that's fairly straightforward so force is equal to mass times acceleration. That's Newton's second law and indicates that the force of an object is proportional to its mass times its acceleration. So to rearrange that equation, at the moment this is the form that the equation will be given to us in our exam and that is allowing us to calculate the force. The force here is what we call the subject of the equation. So it is allowing us to work out the force and to do that, we multiply the mass by the acceleration. Now, there are two other quantities in this equation, mass and acceleration. So the question could be calculate the acceleration of the object or calculate the mass. So if I want to calculate the mass of an object, I need to make mass the subject of the equation. So the way I do that is I can change the equation as long as I do the same thing to both sides. So I want to get it so that mass is the only thing on this side of the equation. So I need to get rid of acceleration. Now the way I do that is I can divide that side of the equation all by acceleration. So that that will now cancel out. But the thing that's important to remember is I have to divide this side also by acceleration. So now my two accelerations on this side of the equation will cancel out. So the mass is equal to the force divided by the acceleration. So now mass is the subject of the equation. We could do the same thing for acceleration, but in that case we would then take the force and we would divide both sides by the mass. So that now mass cancels out on this side. and we are left with acceleration as the subject. Now that approach will work for most formulas with three components in it. Let's have a look at another one. Okay, so this time let's have a look at an equation for acceleration. Now the equation for acceleration is the change in speed, which is the final speed, take away the initial speed, so the speed that you end at, take away the speed that you start at, divided by time. Now, this time, I can't remove t on this side of the equation by simply dividing by, because that's at the bottom already, it's already the denominator, that's already been divided. So if I've got something that's divided by already and I want to remove that, instead of dividing by it, I multiply by it. So if I want to make it so that the change in speed is the subject of that equation, I can then do a is equal to v take u divided by t, and I multiply both sides by time. So now I can cancel out the time at the bottom and cancel out the time there, so I'm left with a times t is equal to v minus u. And if I wanted to work out either the final speed or the initial speed, because I have take away, I do the opposite function. So I add. So I do A multiplied by T and add U. If I do the same on this side, V minus U plus U, they now cancel out. So I'm left with an equation for V, which is A multiplied by T plus U u, which is the starting speed, will give me v, the final velocity. So that is an example of how to rearrange an equation where we have a denominator. For two examples we've just looked at, 
both are done from first principles. So we've included every step. Now, the more of these that you practice, the easier they become. So we're going to look briefly at how we can shorten this process. So if we've got the equation for speed, which is distance divided by time, we've got time on the bottom of the equation. So if I want to calculate d, what I can imagine doing is moving time from here up from the denominator up to the top of the equation. So it will be speed multiplied by time is equal to distance. What I could then do is if I wanted the equation in terms of time, I could then move speed back down so I can move it across the equation. So I would end up with time is equal to distance divided by speed. So I've rearranged that equation to give me speed and then distance and then I've gone from this equation to go to give me time. So you do the opposite function always. So if it's divided by, I times it and if it's multiplied, I divide it. Let's have a look at two more examples. Okay, so this time we're going to have a look at rearranging one of the harder equations, which is the equation for kinetic energy. So kinetic energy is equal to half multiplied by the mass multiplied by velocity squared. Now, at the moment, energy is the subject of this equation. Now, I've wrote that as multiplied by a half. You can also write that same equation as mass multiplied by velocity squared divided by 2. And your teachers will choose one of those methods to use, um, so you should be familiar with at least one of them. Now, when you get it written in your exam booklet, it will be written like this. So, we need to recognise, number one, that that divided by 2 can be wrote like that, um, in order to allow us to rearrange it easily. So, first we'll rearrange it so that mass is the subject of the equation. So, we want to move number 2 up onto this side of the equation for energy. So, we multiply both sides of the equation first by 2. So, we'll have... 2e is equal to mass times velocity squared divided by 2 multiplied by 2. So the 2s will cancel out and we'll be left with 2e is equal to mass times velocity squared. And then because we want to make mass the subject of our equation, we need to divide by velocity squared. So we will have 2e divided by velocity squared is equal to mass times velocity squared divided by velocity squared so that will cancel and then we will be left with 2e divided by velocity squared is equal to the mass. Now if we want to make velocity the subject of the equation that's a little bit more difficult. So let's go back to looking first at this equation. If we want to make velocity the subject of the equation, we need to do the same first steps. So our, we will multiply by 2 again, and our 2 will come up here. So we will have 2e is equal to the mass multiplied by velocity squared. But this time we will divide both sides by the mass. So mass will cancel, and we'll be left with 2e is over m is equal to velocity squared. Now, the problem this time is that equation has got velocity squared as the subject. And clearly, if we think of an example of a square like the square of 6, there's a difference between 6 and the square of 6, which is 36. So that, at the moment, isn't actually allowing us to calculate v. That's allowing us to calculate velocity squared. So we have to remove the square root and the, the, the squared function. And the way we do that is by using a square root. So I'm going to square root the whole of this side of the equation, all of it. And that will then allow us to cancel out the squared here so that we are left with just velocity. So remember that if you're removing a squared function, you square root the opposite side of the equation. So in summary, we have the initial version of this equation to give us energy, which is half mv squared. 
We've then looked at how we can calculate the velocity, which is 2e over m square rooted is equal to v. And we also looked at how mass is equal to 2e divided by v squared. And that is one of the harder equations to rearrange just because of the squared function. We'll look at one more example, which comes at the end of P3, which is to do with the relationship between kinetic energy and gravitational potential energy. So the final equation we're going to look at is the conversion between the gravitational potential energy into kinetic energy for a falling object. So examples of this would be for skydiving or for roller coasters. So the equation for gravitational potential energy, or GPE for short, is equal to the mass multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity, which is g, and those two parts of the equation are is equal to the weight, and then we multiply that by the change in the height. So that's the equation for gravitational potential energy. And if an object falls, its gravitational potential energy is transferred into kinetic energy. So the equation for kinetic energy is equal to half m v squared. So we can equate those two equations, written in short, as mgh, and if we don't put the multiplication signs here, and just put letters together, that still means multiply. So that's mass times g times h, which is equal to half mv squared. Now clearly, there are lots of things that we can rearrange that equation into. And the one that I'm going to do is I'm going to rearrange it to give me a value for height, but I'm going to remove the mass part of the equation because we have mass on both sides. So I want to make first h the subject of the equation. So in order to do that, I'm going to rewrite this equation in a simpler form as mass times velocity squared divided by 2. And I want to move mass and gravitational acceleration down to this side of the equation. So I divide both sides of the equation by mass and divide it by g, or the acceleration due to gravity. So that will leave me with h is equal to mv squared divided by 2 and then divided by mass and g. So now we've got mass above and below the division sign. So that cancels out. So mass will cancel. So h will be equal to v squared divided by 2g. So that's an equation to allow me to um, have h or the height as the subject. Now I can then rearrange this equation quite simply to give me an equation for the acceleration due to gravity but more useful is v or the velocity. So to rearrange this equation to give me v I can then multiply both sides of the equation by 2g so that I will end up with 2gh and that will be equal to velocity squared and just as like in kinetic energy equation if I need to remove a squared function I do the opposite which is square root so I square root this side of the equation so velocity is equal to the square root of 2gh remember that this is only one of the two methods that you can use to rearrange equations. If you feel confused by this method because you're not familiar with it and are more familiar with the triangle method, then stick to that approach. This method will just allow you to go further and can be used at A level. And really you should practice rearranging equations regularly and if you don't feel confident, ask your teachers to give you some examples and work through them.